so it's um 1.43 in the morning. I'm using a candle for light because it's dark. And I uh, just wanted to say some things that are involved in Moldavodin's little, n not a day in the life, but a night in the life of Moldavodin's. Um, just funny things happen sometimes when you have mold. So all these things like come together. So the story is that I, I found a while back that using butter on my skin would really detoxify me a lot. It's like it absorbs the fat soluble toxins. And um, I thought that I would be able to do this here if I used this drain cleaner afterward. However, uh, even if I use the drain cleaner, it still stops up the drain. It's this natural enzyme drain cleaner. So my drain got stopped up, my, my bathroom bathtub drain. I just did it once when I first moved in. And so now, you know, the water doesn't come out of the drain very well. And it's, it's gotten worse recently, probably just more stuff getting stuck there. And so now when I take a shower, there's like a layer of water that sits there afterward. So then you combine this with the fact that my car got moldy when I left the windows cracked, when it was raining really hard, when it was raining here for about a week at a time, which is very unusual here. And so now when I go in the car, my hair gets moldy. And so, you know, every time I go in the car, I try to clean the car, or even just go in there for a few minutes to put the windows up or down, um, it sticks to my hair. The hair picks up mold really well. I'm thinking I should probably wear a shower cap when I do this, and just put it on real fast and do the thing and get out. Um, so I try to keep my head out of the car, but I have, I don't know, I, it gets moldy anyway. So I've been taking showers, and what happens is if I... If it's really moldy and I take a shower, the, the mold seems to... I was kind of surprised because one day I went in the bathroom and it was moldy in there. It's not usually moldy in there and I was reacting in there. And I think what's happening is that the mold from my hair just sits there in the bathtub. Maybe, or maybe it's that the bathtub is just wet and it's humid in there for a while and also most of the windows are closed here now. And the relative humidity might be higher because it's colder. Uh, the windows are closed because it's cold here. So anyway, the bathroom's getting moldy and it, it, I react to it the same way that I react to the car. So, what's happening frequently is that, combine another fact, is that when I'm going to bed, I have to be really, really mold free. Your mold situation when you're sleeping is the most important because I think your body takes your cortisol levels down and so it's less protected against toxins mold toxins and stuff at that time. So anything that wasn't bothering me before starts to bother me more when I try to relax. And the same goes for if I'm trying to have like a relaxing conversation on the phone or talk to my boyfriend or talk to a waking down mentor or something. Um, if I slow down, then I'm bothered more if there's toxins on my hair or something. So a lot of times I'll be kind of slowing down a conversation. I'm like, yeah, I really need to go take a shower, get this off my hair if I've just been in the car or something. So what's happening is that a lot of times I have to go to the bathroom right before I go to bed. Um, and because I drink a lot of water and I think most people do that anyway. So I will go in there and then I realize I'm reacting in the bathroom because maybe I've, I often will take a shower like 30 minutes before bed just to make sure my hair isn't moldy, but somehow the bathroom's getting contaminated. So I, I go in there, I try to get out of there quickly, but a lot of times I get out and then trying to go to bed, I'm like, I'm reacting to my hair too much to sleep. This is not good. I can't relax enough. My body's not letting me relax. It doesn't like that my hair's moldy. So then I'm stuck with a moldy bathroom and I need to take another shower before I go to bed. And all, it's stressful taking this many showers. Sometimes I take up to four showers a day, mainly to clean my hair. Uh, you know, some people might say just shave your head or whatever, which I've done years ago, um, before I had Lyme. But uh, I like having hair, and uh, I don't even know what this is. I think it's a smoothie. Just let me get some water. Um, so, what happened tonight was that same thing around midnight. I went in the bathroom and I got moldy and I tried to sleep a bit. And when I took another shower, 
I'm using my little air ionizer in the bathroom, and then I am ozonating the bathroom now. And anyway, I thought I was about ready to go to bed, and I didn't want to get my hair moldy again right before bed because I'd gone through all of this, and I wasn't sure if I could trust the bathroom not to get my hair moldy. So I was like, why don't I just pee in some plastic cups? <laughs> so I did that. And, um, but then I, I remember that, like, every time that you do this, it makes the floor sticky, because, like, always, like, one drop, like, gets where it's not supposed to be on the floor, and so then the floor got sticky, and so then I had to wash the floor a lot. I don't know why it makes the floor sticky. Obviously, I've done this before. I've actually done this when, like, our neighbor was using drugs in below us in the bathroom and we couldn't go in the bathroom, etc. So anyway, sometimes the bathroom is contaminated and you have to be creative. So I spent a lot of time cleaning the floor and now I need to go to the bathroom again because I drank a ton of water before bed because I wanted to detoxify. And so it's just, it's, it's just very complicated and I've been, it's been two hours of kind of troubleshooting and, um, Please don't laugh at me or make rude comments, but this is just, um, this is how it goes. But, uh, I am feeling optimistic about getting better in general, but I think some of it is just that it's lonely because I don't know if anybody knows what my day-to-day -day life is like and anybody in my family and, and, um, I think a lot of people are just overwhelmed by it and so they're like, they try to just think it away, but... The honest truth is this is all real, and I, 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 if I want to do mold avoidance, I have to do everything I'm doing. Um, the car is pretty toxic, and mold does stick to hair really well for some reason. Uh, maybe static electricity, I don't know, who knows. And um, I, it's really critical that I be in a very low mold situation while sleeping. My body just demands that. Um, I'm not having that terrible symptoms from the car really. It doesn't even really preclude me from detoxing or anything, but just when I'm sleeping, my body really wants a rest from it. And, um, I, and then another thing is that it's not like I'm just being, um, neurotic and like assuming all these things are happening. Like I was, I was really surprised that the bathroom was moldy. It doesn't usually happen. Maybe it's the fact that there's just this higher humidity situation now, or maybe it's that the um, car was extremely toxic this one time after I'd had to seal it up and anyway so I don't, I don't know um, I'll make other videos just about what the day-to-day -day life is like with this condition because it's it's tiring it's really tiring and, and sometimes it's really hard to apply yourself in other areas of life when you're coping with this because it, just the level of unpredictability and it's like when something crazy is not happening, you have you have to be really careful with your priorities. It's not like you have all this space for tons of priorities and they're all like driven by your will. It's like you have this random thing that's happening. You don't know how often or when it's going to happen where you have to deal with mold crisis. And you don't even really feel safe in any living environment that you're in because anything could happen today. My, my apartment smelled like cigarettes. And I was freaking out because I've had so many times living environments became unsafe for me because of supposedly acceptable things that other people were doing and the and the the, the neighbors were doing. And uh, you know, so so it's like a big part of life is just managing this thing where you have to cope when stuff is contaminated. You have to cope when weird things happen to your body and it's like there's two kinds of life. One kind of life is when something unacceptable is happening and you just sort of like let go of your expectations and you're like I'm going to handle this situation and you, you lower your expectations. So your expectations are like if I sleep at all I'm happy or say that I don't sleep but I feel okay. Okay then I'm happy. You know or say that I have any blanket of any sort tonight, then I'm happy. Or if I have any clothing at all to wear so that I'm not naked, I'm happy. You know, you lower your expectations and you do what you have to do. 
And then other times life is normal, which is what most people have, where you can count on things, or, or at least in that moment you can count on things, and that's when you can be productive and whatever. But life switches back and forth between these two states very frequently. And um, I have like a major kind of devastating crisis on average once, once a month. And um, it seems, and then I have these sort of minor things happen a few times a week where uh, something's contaminated and it's kind of surprising and whatever, you know. So, and um, this has been happening for a year, um, ever since I got mold poisoning and got really mold sensitive. It's a major, it's this combination of major crises and minor crises and takes a lot of time and, and just day-to-day -day life with it takes time because you have to just build in time for, okay, I've been out in my car, now I'm going to take a shower and now I'm going to wash my clothes by hand with grapefruit seed extract and vitamin C and I'm going to, um, and there's a lot of times when you're just thinking and it's just a lot of logistical problems like, all right, which shirt am I going to wear? I have three options. This one's definitely not moldy, but if I wear this one and then I don't have something to go on tomorrow, and this one isn't mold, you know, you kind of just, mm, a, lot, a lot of interesting problems come up where it's like, how is this going to get there without getting moldy, and how am I going to, you know, whatever, so, anyway, sorry it's such a long video.